Hello friend. Hello and welcome back to Relatable Girl. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Kendra Saunders. I am the owner of Half Lucid Jewelry. I make crowns like the one I'm wearing. Um, I am the author of the Alien Pop Star series and I am a YouTuber here, mostly talking about life in New York City with severe allergies. Um, but I also have um, different series about pop culture things that I love, like Mr. Robot. I am working on one right now about Star Wars. I have others in the um, works, but the Mr. Robot one has been the main one, as you know. If you have been here before for my Hoodies Up videos, you know that I've been following along with season four, making videos, just kind of talking about what's happening, what I'm guessing is going to happen, etc. Um, I'm choosing for this particular and the last uh, episode of Hoodies Up to not wear a hoodie because we have come to the end of Elliot's journey. And um, before I get into like the very spoilery things, I'll just say I felt it was appropriate that we don't have the hoodie for this last episode. So um, anything after this point though, as I'm sure you can guess, is going to be full of spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled about Mr. Robot season four and the finale, um, then, you know, you better stop watching right now. If you do want to watch more of these videos, though, there is a playlist. I'm going to link it at the end of this video. Please go check that out. It has, you know, videos about every, every episode, um, this season so far. Some of them are combined, but, um, yeah, that's me. You can go check out if you'd like. Anyway, that's enough for the introduction. Let's get to the finale. Also, I know I'm in a different spot than I normally am. I am filming this actually at my parents' house up north um, on Christmas break. So I watched the last two episodes up here um, at my parents' house. And, you know, it was kind of an interesting thing to be like on Christmas break and be watching something like Mr. Robot because it's not exactly a show that's just like filled with Christmas joy in any way, you know. Um, so... I want to start by saying that I think the ending that Sam Esmail gave us is a beautiful ending. I think that, um, you know, whereas we can talk about like cinematography and just like a general vibe, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was filmed beautifully. The acting was great. However, <laughs> Um, you know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, I was very much a proponent of wanting us to find out what was up with White Rose's machine. And I was very much in favor of having White Rose's machine actually be either a time machine or be some kind of, um, portal into alternate worlds, alternate realities, alternate dimensions, whatever. I was fine with the sci-fi element of it. I thought it felt like it was leading up to that and I was okay with that. I was ready for that. And I have always said that I trusted Sam Esmail to be able to land the right ending. And I was like, it's okay. He's going to stick that landing. It's going to be great. I trust him. I started feeling a little concerned toward the end of the first part of the finale that maybe he wasn't going to be able to pull it all together and then I was like no there's no way there's going to be a big twist he always has a big twist he's gonna it's gonna come together it's fine by the like by the time that we had only like five minutes left in the last episode though I kind of had to accept that it wasn't going to end in a way that felt satisfactory, at least for me and maybe for other people that were as fascinated by that potential sci-fi plot line. That being said, again, I think the ending was beautiful in its own way. And I think the way it wrapped up the emotional core of the show was beautiful and it was fitting. That being said, I just don't understand why we didn't get any closure about White Rose and her machine. So if we go back, we remember that White Rose showed Angela something that completely convinced super rational, cold Angela to actually believe that White Rose had created something that could bring people back from the dead. We weren't sure how, but 
whatever it was had convinced Angela of this. Angela went from being a hard ass to being somebody who so fully believed in White Rose's cause that she was actually okay with doing things and taking part in things that would cause people to die because she was so sure that they would not stay dead, that White Rose was somehow going to bring them back, that everything was going to be okay. We watched Angela spiral into madness about this. We watched other people who also had the same strong beliefs and we always wondered, is it just because White Rose is so good at manipulating people and convincing them? Is she like a cult leader or is she telling the truth? White Rose is one of the only villains I can think of in modern TV where I felt like throughout the entire show, she was always a completely equal and worthy villain or antagonist, if you want to say, to our hero. I loved White Rose's character. I think she was fascinating. I think her backstory was fascinating. I think every scene she was in was just, it was better for having her in it. And I started feeling a bit concerned about what they were going to do with her storyline. As you know, a few episodes ago, when it felt a little self-congratulatory and, you know, uh, White Rose lost all her money and she was afraid she was about to be arrested and all of that. I was a bit concerned already then because it sort of felt like to me that that was them showing like Elia has defeated her. I didn't like that. I didn't feel like it had been earned yet. And I was so glad that we still had an actual confrontation where the two of them are face to face as they were in the finale. And I was happy to see that. And I think the entire like scene between them and the dialogue between them was great. I loved hearing White Rose explain with such passion and rage and sorrow why she created this machine and what she thinks she's going to be able to do with it. And I loved us getting to see Elliot finally say, you know, yeah, I hate people. I hate society the way it is. I'm afraid of people. I've been afraid of them my whole life. But I still think that this world is worth something because of at least some good people in it. I thought that was great. And I was like, okay, here we go. Like, we're either going to see the machine work and whatever is going to happen, or Elliot is going to say he chooses to stay here. And White Rose believed in her machine and in this potential better world so much that she killed herself, truly believing that she would be able to come back in, uh, you know, another world or be in a better place I'm assuming by turning the machine on, even though she knows she doesn't have enough power. That could have been seen as just her committing suicide because she knows that she's going to be arrested. And she knows that at that point it's too late. But I, I believed as I was watching it that that was her way of saying to him, this is how strongly I believe in this. I know that I will be able to come back in this alternate world. You have to believe me. And I am so sure that you'll believe me that I'm actually going to shoot myself. That whole scene, intense, so well done. And you know, Elliot plays this little game on the computer that is supposed to either stop the machine from running slash blowing up and causing nuclear meltdown or keep it running and attempt to make it work. And in the game, you know, he goes through some like symbolic questions and he ends with saying that he's going to stay with his friend instead of like escaping basically. And that's like what unlocks everything and shuts the machine down sort of. And you know, the screen goes red and we're thinking, okay, either Elliot's dead or he did get transported into an alternate dimension like White Rose had promised. And they set us up very much to think that, which I always knew something seemed a little off about it. I wasn't super surprised to find out that something was off, but you know, for the finale, we, we follow Elliot and he's, in this like perfect alternate world where he's not socially awkward and he dresses well and he's like kind of ripped and he loves Angela and they're getting married tomorrow and he's about to get a big raise at work and everybody respects him and everything is great. His life is great. And they, you know, they only have small glimmers showing of things that are sort of wrong in his life. But then our Elliot shows up in that world and confronts perfect Elliot and tries for a moment to take his place, which, you know, as it's happening, we don't really, we just think like, okay, he's in an alternate dimension. He's going to kill his alternate. He's going to take over his life and live happily ever after. But then things start getting weirder and very dreamlike. And I was so afraid for a minute that it was going to be one of those, the whole thing was a dream kind of thing. And I was like, oh, Sam Esmail, you cannot do that to us. You cannot do that to us. Um, thankfully they did not do that. Um, but 
you know, it's all very dreamlike and we find out finally that Elliot all this time has actually just been another personality inside of the real Elliot, that Elliot has been the mastermind who took over real Elliot back at the beginning of the show when the events of the you know, first season started taking place to help him to do all the things that he wouldn't have been able to do himself because he's too gentle, he's too whatever. So, okay, I thought that was a great twist. And as I was realizing what they were saying, I was like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. I could kind of see that. I always wondered if we as the audience were going to be like the other personality. Um, and I had thought once or twice, like maybe it'll be Elliot, but okay, so cool. That is a cool like twist. I accept that. I think that's really cool. Um, but then we have him wake up in the hospital and thank God it hadn't all been a dream because again, I would have been so angry. But we find out that he was at, you know, White Rose's machine and it did partially explode and he barely survived. And then he's, you know, talking to Darlene who's there with him. Darlene is finally here for him like she should have been all along. And she's sorry about not being there for him before. And they have a conversation. And Elliot finally admits to her that the Elliot that has been talking to her this whole time has been him, the mastermind, and not real Elliot, her brother. And she admits that she knew that. She had a feeling. But she went ahead and went with it because she knew that this Elliot was, like, getting stuff done. And that needed to happen. And we see this struggle inside of um the, the the host the the outside Elliot as all of his different personalities are sort of struggling for control and to find their place. It was some incredible acting. I will absolutely give them that. Rami Malik, absolutely incredible this scene. Um but the Elliot that we've been following this whole time, the mastermind finally decides that it's time for him to give up control to the host Elliot who he had shoved into an alternate world, if you will, um, which was that beautiful, happy place that he was just visiting where, you know, he's not socially awkward and he has a great job and he's getting married to Angela. He sort of pushed him there and has left him there on a loop, letting him live happily while he takes over and gets things done. And Darlene does confirm for us that yes, they did hack um, E Corp. Yes, F Society was real. Yes, Angela is dead. Yes, all of that happened. So, all right, that's cool. There is never a mention though of did White Rose's machine actually work? What was the machine? I felt like that plot was too big and too important in the last season or really last two seasons to have just left hanging like or left up to interpretation. All I would have really needed was for Elliot to even had a single like line of dialogue just saying something like I had a chance to go and take up you know take White Rose up on her offer. I had a chance to go and live in a place where Angela was still alive and my life would have been perfect but I chose to stay here with you because this is where I belong and you're the people that believe in me and love me anyway. And if he had said something like that, you know, relating um, back to choosing stay on the computer when he was with, you know, in White Rose's machine, I think that would have helped us to feel a little more satisfied that like that was a conscious choice and that he does believe that the machine would have worked. He doesn't know for sure, but he believes it would have worked, but he still didn't want to do it anyway. But we don't know that. Or if he could have said like, or, or if Darlene could have said maybe that they found out that the machine was never going to work. It wasn't what they thought it was. You know, White Rose was wrong all along and Angela died for nothing. Again, I at least would have felt more satisfied to have an ending to that whole plot. Um, there was also no mention of Dom. Dom really got the shaft this season. I feel like she had a couple episodes that were excellent and the tension was so great. But I hated what they did with her at the end and the fact that she got on the plane thinking that Darlene was going to be on the plane, but Darlene wasn't. And then Dom just flies away. And that's the last time we see or hear of her again. I thought that was a little, I just, I didn't like that. I think there should have been a little bit more closure with her and Darlene with the whole thing. Um, so I feel like this ending was beautiful and I feel like it would have been a perfect ending for the show if the show had never involved White Rose's machine. If White Rose was just the head of the Dark Army and 
was just a bad guy, you know, in control of all this money, I think this would have been the perfect ending. It would have been a beautiful ending. But when you've built that much towards something, you have to acknowledge it at the end, even if it's just to say it was never real all along. She thought it was, she was wrong. The machine actually wouldn't have done anything or to say, we don't know if the machine would have worked, but I did choose, I decided to stay here. Like, I, I think it was real. I think the machine would have worked, but I chose to stay here. I don't think that him typing stay into the computer was quite enough. It was too subtle, I feel like, even though it was a very long scene, to truly tell us as the audience whether or not the machine would have worked and if that was even something we were supposed to be concerned about. Because we could be left not knowing, but I needed to hear from them without so much subtlety that you know Elliot did believe it was going to work and he still chose to stay so that being said um again I thought the ending was beautiful I am so excited to rewatch the series I want to start over completely and like see all the little things that I missed the first time around because I'm sure there are probably a lot of them and I want to see how it all ties together um but yeah, this has been very long and rambly. I'm sorry. It's just, this is a show that I absolutely loved and I had a lot to say about this last two episodes. I think overall, this is still one of the best series I've ever seen. And it is definitely still one of my favorite series I've ever seen. I just, I do wish there had been a tiny bit more closure for White Rose, the machine, and for Dom. Like that's, that's pretty much all I would ask for. I think we had plenty of closure about everything else. I think the, the relationship between Darlene and Elliot was beautiful. And the fact that the mastermind, the Elliot that we've been following, gave control back over to the host out of his love for Darlene so that she could have her brother back. I thought that was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, one other tiny possibility um, I had considered was, is this world that he's in, is this the alternate world that White Rose created for him? Like, does each person go into their own perfect alternate world? And was his a place where he survived and took down all the bad guys and he doesn't really need Angela but he does need his sister and now he's living in an alternate world where everything is going to be okay he gave control back to the real Elliot I don't know maybe that's what's happened I don't know what do you think I'm very curious what you think though um you know definitely let me know in the comments what you think <laughs> I feel like everybody else has said they love this ending so much and nobody is complaining about anything about it and I'm like why am I the only one who's like Ugh, but they didn't talk enough about the machine i don't know maybe it's just because i really wanted it to have that sci-fi twist i don't know but all in all amazing show acting so good the writing so good except for a couple episodes couple scenes couple small things toward the end of the season and in my opinion leaving those threads dangling otherwise i think it was fantastic so please let me know what you think about this and again if you haven't watched the other videos you should go check them out and if you haven't already you should subscribe to this channel because there's all kinds of fun cool stuff here anyway thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble i will stop talking now and let you get back to uh subscribing to this channel